Reaching an elevation of 20,320 feet, Mount McKinley stands. An icon of the last frontier, it is the highest peak in all of North America. In 1967, a group of climbers had the goal of conquering the mountain, but not in June or July as others had done in the past. This unique crew had decided on January, the dead of Alaska's winter. You know, nobody had been up there to try to climb in that winter darkness. And we wondered, how cold is it going to get? What are the storms going to be like? So it was this challenge to see if we could do something that, you know, I mean, a lot of climbers at the time said, hey, you're crazy, you can't, it can't be done. You know, I'd never go up there. But we had an idea that maybe we could do it. The we that had that idea included Jacques Farine, Greg Bloomberg, Shiro Nishimai, George Von Wickman, John Edwards, Ray Jeanne, Dave Johnston, and Art Davidson. Eight men looking to best a mountain. Sadly, eight men would not return. You know, the second day out on a climb, Farine, who was in some ways the strongest climber physically amongst us, he fell through a crevasse and died. And our emotions, I mean, it just, it just wrecked havoc with us. We were so upset. We were so hurt. We were so, so sad. We almost left the mountain. With heavy hearts, the group would push on up to 14,000 feet, then up to 17,000, where they'd set up a large snow cave. The sights along the way still stay with Davidson. There were times when there was a full moon, and all that moonlight was just splashed over the glaciers and those high ridges. I mean, I tell you, it's like a, it's like a fairy tale world up there. Of the seven remaining climbers, only three would make the trip to the summit. Ray Jeanet, Dave Johnston, and Art Davidson. The group climbed to Denali Pass, up to Deacon's Tower, and then with the sun quickly fading, the three men worked their way to the mountain's top. They had done it, the first winter ascent of Mount McKinley. But the seminal chapter of this story was still to come. We reached the summit at about a little after 7 o'clock at night. And that's when it was pitch dark. Anchorage in the distance was just this little faint glow of lights. And we were only there for a few minutes. We turned in, around and started down because it was, you know, it was 57 below zero. Making their descent with only headlamps to guide them, the three men, Ray Jeanet, Dave Johnston, and Art Davidson, were able to make it back to Denali Pass. But fatigued from the climb, the altitude, and the conditions, the group decided to wait for sunrise before traversing a dangerously steep wall to reach their friends. That seemed the most prudent, safe thing to do. Well, in the morning, a tremendous storm came up, and the wind was like, it was like a force that we'd never seen before. We had some equipment that, that dislodged from our grip, and it was just thrown, thrown, and blown across the glacier like it was a leaf in a fall storm. I mean, we thought the wind would die down in what? You know, a few hours, certainly a day. It couldn't last two days. But it went on day after day after day. And we were separated from our companions. They were down at that lower camp. They tried to come up and find us, and they, they, they couldn't climb to that pass. The wind was too hard for them to stand up. And so they retreated, and they waited day after day, and after three or four days, they knew there was absolutely no way we could still be alive. And they descended the mountain knowing that we were not going to survive and that we perished up there. But against all odds, the three climbers did survive, outlasting the storm six days before descending on their badly frostbitten feet and making their way down the mountain. We're, our bodies, our minds were so drained. You know, we'd barely come through and we, and we knew that. More than 40 years after reaching the summit and surviving the descent, Davidson still reflects back on the lessons he learned from the Great One. You know, in, in all of our lives, we have difficult times. You know, we, we, we lose our job, we, we, you know, we have family troubles, we lose a relative, we get sick. And there are times when you have to try to dig deep to find that courage to go on. And so I think that was, uh, that was, that was something that really emerged from our climb and that, you know, I, I know all of us, you know, share with young people when we can. Wow, you know, we could begin thanking so many people. Um, probably start with our parents who thought we were crazy to do this <laughs> mountain climbing stuff. Uh, you know, I, I know in our hearts uh, with us today our other companions, Shiro, uh, Farine, Ray Jeanet, um, uh, George Wickman, whose daughter's here with us, uh, 
and, and I think many other friends that we've had over the years who've, who've lost their way in the mountains and, and, and have uh, struggled and, and maybe haven't made it back. Uh, I, think, I think all the people that come in here in one way or another are part of a team, the people that helped them, the people they worked with. And I know for us, it was, it was a team that uh, uh, our lives depended on each other. I wouldn't be here today if, if, if Dave hadn't gone out in that storm, that first one, that wind came up and dug a tiny little cave for us to huddle in under. The best thing about this Hall of Fame project is the work that Harlow and his crew have done to give our kids role models and teaching them healthy lifestyles and eating habits. Although I do worry what parents would think if they knew that some of us at least were just climbing bones who lived on minute rice and spam. We're very, very thankful and honored to be among such a great group of world-class athletes. We work together as a team and there's no better feeling. Thank you.